it's time to start making some color for the rock uh, castings and what I've done is I have a selection of paint colors and I like the my particular rocks to be going to be uh, sort of like a red oxide very typical of some of the regions that that I'm modeling um, too often modelers are afraid of color and if you look at rocks there are all kinds of colors from black to red to tan to gray I like a little bit of color so in a mixing jar what I've done is taken some acrylic paints I put a little bit of water in and then I've been adding colors from various color tubes till I get the approximate color that I want. Now this is going to be very intense simply because it's it's not diluted. Uh, it'll give me the approximate color and then I'll be adding this to one of these spritzer bottles and the more I add the deeper it will go so I'll start off with a lot of water to, and I'll do some test shots on some plaster first and slowly add the full strength color as I do some testing on the plaster. So I've got the approximate color that I want right, right now and I've added several colors. Um, mix it up. Now that I've done a little test here and I'm satisfied with the, the general tone, now it's just simply a matter of spraying and I can spray over these rocks as well because they, they should be a similar color and just gently spray cover as many surfaces as possible this is just the first application second application will be contrasting and shadows And I keep a, a bottle of clean water handy because anything that I get sprayed like like the mural anything I don't want color pigment on, I just spray it with, with some clean water and we'll put some accents all through here afterwards. And the spray bottle as you can see does a very good job of applying the paint quickly in large areas. Pulls everything together. Now, while, while this is definitely a little too red for what I want to end up with, ultimately, it's the base coat. And as you apply additional layers of stain, it gets a little darker because what's happening is the, the plaster soaks up the stain, but at the same time it's sealing it. So once it dries, it'll be harder to apply additional stain because the plaster will be sealed and of course it won't soak up the stain. I'm not worried about large areas like this because they'll be covered with gravel and sand and weeds and so on. It's mainly the rocks that I, I want to control. And I'm also spraying the rocks that I've already put in the river just to give it that red tone. And I'll show you how we just continue up here. Keep the white bottle, this bottle ready. 
because when I spray the trestle around the footing of the trestle, obviously I'm going to get paint on the trestle bend, but I just wash it off with some straight ball all the water. And you'll see where you know the, I've got spray paint you know on the background murals, which you can't help unless you mask it off. But rather than mask it off, I just wash it off while it's full before it actually sets. So. And it's really that simple. And you can add extra if you want a little, if you want a little deeper color in certain places. Because rock varies constantly, it's not one color. It's the natural property of, of rock. After spraying the basic red that was first mixed, obviously it was a little bit too bright, which I expected. Typically, what I would do, no matter what color rock you want, after doing the initial painting, I go along and I overspray the entire area with another mix and I like to use Payne's Gray. Now Payne's Gray has a little bit of a blue tinge to it and I'll add burnt umber to it to warm it up. And with a diluted solution I spray the entire area, some areas heavier with more attention to them to darken it up. And what that tends to do is neutralize and soften the overall pigment that initially is painted. No matter which color it is, whether it's brown or gray. And the other thing it does, the diluted solution runs into these little pockets and it settles in the deep crevices and it starts to bring out the dimension of the, of the rock work and the texture of it. And you can see as we sort of pan around is not as red and vibrant as it initially was. And you can see here, for example, how the rock work is accentuated. Now I'll come along afterwards and we'll do some highlighting in some of these areas and bring out some more of the texture and I'll be adding some additional um, spray uh, of the uh, of the uh, Payne's Gray uh, that will run into some of the fissures and just highlight the rock work a little bit more. And you, can, you know, even on the back edge here, you can see you can see how the texture has softened everything. I've completed most of the rock work and the hard shell with a material that I gathered locally that I liked uh, the color of.